Let's have some fun with Luke chapter 2, shall we? And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should have a tea party. And this taxing was revoked by the citizens of America because... Oh, we got that three-letter word, you know, that matches the words of all words and the four-letter words. Well, let's look at what's going on in chapter 2, shall we? And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Somebody's got to run the government and somebody's got to pay for it. You know, in America, we got nice roads out there that are paved. Unlike jungle cities areas and all that. We got city lights. This taxing was first made when Cyrus was governor of Syria. Now these all could be dated. And all my notes are all... I got a new Bible to make notes in it. And I got notes in it and I can't read them. Too small. But this can be dated. And all went to be taxed. Everyone in his own city. And notice how the Bible does not record anybody revolted. You'll find a revolt, I believe, in Acts 5.37. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth. He's way up north. He's got a, God's got a, a problem, can I say, with man. G Mary's about to give birth to her son. God, Jesus Christ. Prophecy states that Jesus needs and will be born in one city. And it's not Nazareth. How do we get Joseph to take Mary into Bethlehem? Because Bethlehem is not Jerusalem. You can't say it three times a year, let's bring Mary here. How do we get Joseph to move to Bethlehem? God said, I got an idea. And God is holy. God is righteous. And God says, I will call a Roman tax to move Joseph down to Bethlehem. So God used a tax to move Jesus to Bethlehem so Jesus can be born according to the scriptures. Now had Joseph revolted, it would have been, okay, Jesus died according to scriptures. He was buried according to scriptures. He rose again the third, third day according to scriptures. But he just wasn't born where he was supposed to be born according to the scriptures. And when you open up, I can't even name it is now. The Book of Mormon. And I don't have to know. In the Book of Mormon, Jesus is not born in Bethlehem. I forgot what, I, I forget where they say it. But G God used taxes to bring Joseph to Bethlehem. Joseph went up city on a hill, mountain, from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, onto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Why? Because he was of the house of the lineage of David, Matthew chapter 1. That's the king. Now, Joseph legally adopts this child. A legal binding document states that Jesus Christ comes from the city of David, of the line of David. Joseph was not supposed to be where he was supposed to be. In the land of Israel. He's supposed to be in Bethlehem. I don't know what he's doing up in Galilee. He's out of spot. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. So Joseph obeyed God and Joseph obeyed the government. And Christ was born where he was supposed to be born. Now, I don't know. I see Jesus paying taxes. I see Jesus telling Peter to go fish for a coin to get some taxes. Had they revoked his taxes, Jesus would have never been born where he would have been born. Better be careful what you revoke, because God may be the author of it. 
In Romans 13, Paul tells everyone, hey, obey the powers that be. Joseph did. And so it was that while they were there, that the days were accomplished. Right? To be tacked. Yeah, I read. To, I'm, I'm missing, oh, it's the next verse. That she should be delivered. She's in her ninth month. And she brought forth her firstborn son. Why did you would say firstborn son if there was any others? All right, this is my firstborn son, Henry. I never used that in my life because he's, he's my only son. I got a daughter. If I said, all right, here's my first child. Well, who's your second child? Well, I don't have one. Well, why did you use the word first? Firstborn son wrapped him in swallowing clothes. And that's almost a way to wipe the, uh, the wrapping of Lazarus and a person that's dead. Get the baby real tight. And laid him in a manger. That's where animals feed. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Because there was no room for them at the end. Now there's been a lot about there's no room at the end. Why would there be no room for Jesus at the end? Because all the world's being taxed and they got to go to their house of lineage to be taxed. So the city's full. You know what? You know what? No room at the end told you? The Jews went and paid their taxes. Now, if anybody's going to be paying taxes rather than saving money, it would have been the Jews. And I'm not joking. You think that's a joke? Every Jew in this time went and did what they were supposed to do by the government. And there were in the same country, Bethlehem area, shepherds abiding in the field. So Bethlehem, the house of bread, is a city known for shepherds. And if you're going to have the shepherd and the chief shepherds of all shepherding, John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the shepherd. Where would this shepherd be born? Where David was. David was the greatest shepherd, according to the Bible. Shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ himself, shows up. He's in a manger. I can't get out of here. They got me all wrapped up. <laughs> Came upon them. And glory of the Lord shone round about them. There's that same light that showed to Paul. And they were sore afraid. UFO. There's a Bible UFO right there. Here's this light that came out of the sky. <laughs> Instead of them saying, take us to your leader, let me tell you to go where your leader is. You follow that path and there's your leader. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You know, they laid him in wood and he went to the cross that was wood. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings. That's the gospel. There's another gospel right there. Gospel means good tidings and great joy, which should be to all people. That's not the gospel we preach. We preach that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and arose again. That's our gospel. Yeah, he was born. But without Calvary, without the tomb, without the empty tomb, we we just got God born. This is a good tidings to the people of Israel. The Messiah has been born. That one you've been waiting for, that anointed one, that one of all one, here he is. I'm going to tell you in a minute that when we find out from the Pharisees, oh, we're going to find out everybody knew. Didn't we just read about Zachari Zacharias preaching to the whole family? You didn't, that didn't get out in the headlines? That didn't get out in Jerusalem and then? Says CNN, Jerusalem and then? That didn't get out in all the world? One wacky guy who could not speak spoke today about his son. Sadducees and Sadducees could not find the place in the Bible. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Look at that. All. 
The birth of Jesus Christ is great joy to me. And look how humble that little... I mean, what would you say? Just... I don't want... Let's say forget Jesus for a minute, okay? Just forget the story of Jesus for a minute. What if somebody came with Hey, if you go over to that barn over there, and where the animals feed, you're going to find a baby, and that's going to be your ruler. That's your God. What would you think? You remember what the Bible says about angels? They're messengers. For unto you, well, look at that, talking to the, to the shepherds. I'm trying to find this note. For unto you this day. What day is it? Anybody got a footnote to say December 25th or anything? This day. Jesus' birthday right there. This day. That is Jesus' birthday. Where's the day? Microscope. Is there anywhere in the Bible about the birthday of Jesus? This day. That's the birthday of Jesus. And we don't know what it is. And it can't be December 25th because these shepherds wouldn't have been out there. From what I've been told, they would have popsicle sheep. And a sheep loves his, I mean, a shepherd loves his sheep. He wouldn't put them to that misery. This day in the city of David, a Savior, capital S, which is Christ the Lord. <coughs> 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 oh, forgive me, I didn't say. Ready? And this shall be a sign. Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians 1 22. Now, what is the sign? Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swallowing clothes. I want Mary knew that's why she did that. That was done so these, these shepherds would come. There he is. Lying in a manger. Just don't pick any child in Bethlehem. There's one specific child. He's laying in one specific place where you would not think to find him. You know what that was? You know what that manger was? That was a sign to those shepherds. Where you feed your animals, there is your king. I never got to wonder if these shepherds ever fed from this manger. I, I got to wonder. I don't know. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts singing glory, glory. No, read that word. It says praising God. They were not singing. It says praising God and saying. Weren't singing. Don't pervert the Bible so you can make your hymn all popular and selling books and copyrighted. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's a great verse, but when you go over to Isaiah, there is no peace, saith Lord, unto the wicked. So this baby, who's going to give highest and glory and get all peace, is only going to give it to those that will obey this baby. This commission that God spoke, Jesus Christ, the angel, to these shepherds, the message is... There's your judge. There is your king. There is your savior. There is your Messiah. And the Bible says there is no peace unto the wicked. So no wicked is going to be under this baby. That's glorifying news. I'm going to a place where there will be no more sin and no more sinners. You like your sin? You enjoy your sin? You, you'll be cast off in hell with your sin. You don't enjoy Jesus Christ in the Bible? God will cast you out. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds saw one, said one to another, <coughs> mm. Let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord, capital L, has made known unto the Lord. It was the angel of the Lord. Gee, they forgot to put the angel in there. They reverenced that, that angel. They recognized that was an angel above all angels. And they came with haste. Haste. Yeah, they booked. They ran. And found Mary and Joseph and the babe 
lying in the manger confirming the sign he's under eight days old according to the next verses so he's an infant he was just born days old maybe hours and when they had seen it they made known broad the saying which was told them concerning this child and they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherd now there was no room at the end right everybody was called to their city to be taxed right so how many people would these shepherds be preaching to right now masses and masses of people and Joseph himself was from Nazareth and these people are astonished don't tell me when they didn't go home they didn't say, you know we heard these shepherds say something about the Messiah was born in a, in a uh, trough uh, uh, well you know the rumors went out there the telephone game you imagine all the places all the places that Jesus was born by the telephone game The birth of the Messiah, proclaimed by angels, seen by signs, was preached about by shepherds. The first people to ever preach about Jesus were shepherds. How's the pastor doing over his flock? The first men Jesus called were not fishermen. He called shepherds. They heard and wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. The first good news ever preached were by shepherds. But Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. That said much about Mary. There's a word I, I can't think of what it is. Mary's it. She's a very, very wise, resource, resourceful, intelligent woman. She's not going to fall for a scam. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they would, that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. Now they went back to the sheep, their witnesses. When eight days were accomplished, oh, see, between eight and twenty. Jesus is not even eight days old. When eight days were accom accomplished by the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel, the angel, before he was conceived in the womb. Now, Leviticus 12, 4 through 6, between 21 and 22, puts 33 days. Or you go check the law. Eighth day, the, the, the male child is to be circumcised 33 days. And eight days, eight days of circumcision. When the days of her. Well, that's a funny word for a sinless woman. That she has to be purified, purification purified, according to the law of Moses, was accomplished. Wait a minute, the law of Moses. If she was not a sinner ever again, then what would she need the law? And did you read what Leviticus 12 says? One of the offerings she was supposed to bring was a lamb for what? Sin. But the Bible says here she could not afford a law. Let's get to that. That they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So they leave Nazareth, they go to Bethlehem, and they end up in Jerusalem. Joseph and Mary obeyed the law. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Leviticus 12 8 says she could not afford the lamb. 
she held the lamb. John the Baptist said that lamb, that child, behold the lamb of God, would take away the sin of the world. See, he couldn't take away Mary's sin yet. Did you get that? Because he hadn't died on the cross. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And wherever Mary something, the lamb was sure to go. There he is. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation, the comfort, the refreshing, the Messiah of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him, not in him, not in him, and was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost, <coughs> that he should not see death before he has seen the Lord's Christ. Well, isn't that a great proclamation? You're going to see the Messiah in your days before you die. Simeon must have been a wonderful man for God to step down and say, you know what? Before I call you to Abraham's bosom, you're going to see that Messiah. And the next time you see that Messiah, he's going to let you out of Abraham's bosom. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. Simeon came into the temple by the Holy Spirit. God said, go in there. So the Holy Spirit can lead you to go to places. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, after the custom of the law, the circumcision, imagine God had to have that operation. Why? Because it was a covenant of Abraham, of the Jewish people. That operation, verse 27, confirmed that Jesus Christ was Jewish. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, death, according to thy word. Where is he again? Let's get the picture here. Where is he? He's in the temple. There's got to be priests around, right? Somebody's got to be around. The temple's not by itself. No one's alone. Watch these words. My eyes have seen thy salvation. And nobody knew that this was Jesus Christ. He's named at this operation. They do the operation. We're going to name this child Jesus. No one else has been named Jesus. And then Simeon walks up and said, Thy salvation. The Old Testament. That's God. That's Jesus. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all thy people. A light to lighten the Gentiles. Isaiah 42, 6. Seven. Scripture is being quoted now. Eight days of Jesus' life. Scriptures are being quoted about this baby. About this child. They did know who this child is. It's a record in the books of Jerusalem. That this child named Jesus was circumcised the eighth day of... Anybody get the date? You mean nobody recorded the eighth day so we can know what day he was born on? Oh, Simeon. Yeah, who, who was the scribe? That would be recorded in the books, you know, somewhere. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all thy people. A light to lighten the Gentiles. That's me. Simeon brought over, way over... The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Way over the book of Acts. Unto us Gentiles. And glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph. Said 
And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken. Modern Bibles say, and his father and his mother marveled. There would have been no adoption yet. The baby's just eight days old. The paperwork would probably start getting into play right now. But you would not adopt a baby eight days old. And if he's the father right now, then Mary and Joseph came together. So modern Bibles take away the virginity of Mary for Jesus Christ by saying, and the father and the mother marveled. The Bible's right. And Simeon blessed him and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall. That's a great thing to tell a mother, isn't it? Imagine she's got that baby in her arms now. She's loving it. He's just a darling. He's got particularly that light about him. Or something, maybe. I don't know. But there's her firstborn son, and he's going to have a fall. And rising again of many in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. Parentheses. Very important note. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. Well, thank you for the good news, Simeon. That is really present. Did he put that in a hallmark? John 19, 25 about that sword and about her. That the thoughts of men that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. This child is not going to have a good life, is he? And there was one Anna, a prophetess. Prophetess. She told the future, and she was a woman. The daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. They asked her, but that's Asher. She was of great age. Sarah was a good age, great age. Uh, Elizabeth was a great age. And lived with an husband seven years <coughs> from her virginity. So when she took a husband, she was a virgin. She was married, it looks like, seven years. And she was a widow about four score and four years. She was married seven years, 84 years now she's been a widow. Which departed not from the temple. She stayed at the temple. But served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Night and day, she didn't, mean, she didn't leave the temple. She prayed for Israel. People would probably come up to her and say, Anna, would, would you pray for me? I know you're a praying warrior. There's Anna over there. She's a prayer warrior. She's always praying. How well do you know that this woman is well with God? And she coming in that instant gave thanks. So that's prayer, giving thanks to God. That's likewise in the Lord. And spank of him to all that looked for a redemption in Jerusalem. She got to see the Messiah. She's in the temple. She's praying like she always does. And there is Jesus, eight days old. There is Simeon waiting for Jesus. And no one knew who this child was. This child that would come by his father three times a year. This child at 12 years old sat with him and just put them in their spot. They didn't remember that. This 13 year old know it all. You would think you would know Jesus every time he came. Pilate said for envy. I believe that envy began when he was 13 years old. He, that eight day year old you remember what Simeon said and that woman Anna 
Remember the Sadducees and Pharisees always made fun of the people. That's the people. There he is again. And look at all the people following him now. What's it, what else is he going to do in this temple? He's going to go in there and start kicking over the tables one day. He's going to knock the money things over. He's going to make a ruckus in this temple. That's this same Jesus. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord. What's that? The circumcision. And Mary offering a sin offering. According to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. Not Nazarene, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. Filled with the wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. And that's all we know of the infant days. Except for one time in, in Matthew when he's two to four years old. And the wise men. You notice there's no wise men here showing up. We've already passed the nativity scene. There's no wise men. They're in Nazareth. They're in a house, the Bible said. And then the wise men show up to the house in Nazareth. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. They obeyed the law. They did right. I would believe Joseph went the other two times too. But this is a particular one in the Lord's point. This is, would be, I, no, this is the 13th Passover of Jesus Christ. Oh, excuse me, 12. When he was 12 years old, it was 12, not 13. When he was 12 years old, that's a nice year, isn't it? 12 Israel, I don't know why I said 13. Woman 12 years of firmity. Girl 12 years dies. It was Ishmael that was circumcised 13 years old. That's what it was. And they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Imagine Jesus taking taking part of the sacrificial lamb when there he is. You know, this 13th year, the Passover for Jesus Christ, you know, you know what is going on here? You know what this young man, this teenager, he was there the night the Passover lamb. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew it not uh oh but they supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey about 24 miles plus or minus so see Jesus didn't travel alone there's aunts uncles and neighbors in in this feast everybody gathered up and went together and they saw him among the kinsfolk and acquaintance, acquaintance, people they knew, friends. They're not family. And when they had found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, here's an interesting number. They found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them, and asking them questions. 5.17 runs to that chapter. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answer. Who is this 13 year old little know it all? He's God. Don't tell me they didn't remember this day. And all that heard him were astonished and at his understanding and answers. He was answering them. And giving them answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why hast thou dwelt with us? Now, Mary being, Behold thy father, and I have sought thee sorrowing. Thy father, Joseph, and I were crying, What, what happened to you, son? 
Jesus, the nice little boy that he was, God is love. He said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist not that ye must wist not that I must be about my father's business? Corrected his mother there. It's not my father. My father's a comforter. My father is about this business. What business? Where is he at? That's his father's business. Now people say, yeah, okay, Jesus, Joseph was a carpenter. Yes, but Jesus' own words, is, I'm not to be known as a carpenter. I am to be associated with this temple. He later on will say, this is my house. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. Mary kind of forgot that who he was. She forgot he was God. Mary the Magnificent. My God, you forgot who God was. And you're American liberal today would say Jesus was so rude. Mary should have known. Oh God, where would God be? He wouldn't be working on a lathe. He'd be working in the temple. That would have been yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot that little that little great child of mine. That's God. She didn't count. She forgot to count that blessing. And name them one by one. So see, Mary is like you and me. She held that lamb. She should the eight days old. She wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm gonna circumcise this child. Joseph, honey. Mr. Rabbi. Isn't there somewhere in the scrolls that say God should give himself? Isn't there something? Is this something about this baby that the angel spoke to me that the Holy Spirit will come upon me and he shall save his people? Isn't it's all forgotten? And he went down with them. The Bible says in Hebrews 5 8, he had to be subjected to them. Imagine God listening to a parent. Come on, Jesus, let's go. I'm about my father's business, but I gotta obey you. You're my parent. How's that one? I don't know. Would it have been right for his parents to say, okay, if this is your business, let's stay here. I don't know. But he had to be subject to his parents. And was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Mary's got a lot going on in her heart. Heart, not head. She's not thinking. In her heart. So will you see Mary in heaven? Gratefully, yes. But she's not going to be in heaven because she's sinless. I believe she's going to be in heaven because of what her son did on Calvary in the empty tomb. Because she was around after that. I believe with, with her heart being right, heart, heart, heart. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. Heart, heart, heart. I believe she believed on the Lord Jesus Christ was saved. And you imagine God calling her up at, at the great white throne judgment and getting a sore throat telling anybody I'm not the one. She's got to tell all the Catholics she was not the one. And she yet prophesied earlier and said, they shall call me blessed. What did the Catholics call her? The Blessed Virgin Mary. And God's going to call her up as a witness. Listen, don't you realize, Christian, at the Great White Throne Judgment, if you're witnessing, telling your family, your friend, you're going to stand as a judge against those people. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. Isn't that a weird verse? He's, he's God. Doesn't he know it all? I say that reverently. As Jesus, as a child, as a human, he had to learn things. I can't picture this. I can't picture God as a child. Did Mary have to train him how to be potty trained? 
And was it a hard time? Sinless Jesus couldn't have terrible twos. And yet I can't picture Mary and Joseph having to tell Jesus, put that down. But he had to learn wisdom. You know what that wisdom is? It's bedtime. You gotta go to sleep. You can imagine God laying there being full conscience, young, but knowing, okay, it's bedtime. I never did this before. Yeah, yeah, okay, as a baby, yeah, I slept. But to finally realized, wait a minute. I'm sleeping. God slept. All right, Jesus, eat your peas. I'm God. And I got to eat those peas I made. And there's a place in Job that said, do you have eyes as I have? Do you have a mouth as I have? Yes. God, now that answer to that question is, yeah, it's Jesus. Now, did Jesus ever hit his thumb with a hammer and feel pain? I don't know. I can't answer that. But if he did and could, imagine God having a sore thumb. And to realize now God knows what we go through. He would watch. Now come on. You think these are the perfect parents? He would watch his mother and father fight. He would watch a couple down the street as the husband got thrown out. He would see death in, the, in this village. He would see a marriage. He would hear gossip. He would have to study and learn how to speak and know the scriptures. And the Bible says in Hebrews 5, 8, the Bible says here in Luke 2, Jesus increased in wisdom. Here's a funny statement. And stature. How was Jesus when growing up? In favor with God and man. God was pleased with Jesus and men were pleased with Jesus. Until he gets up and starts preaching. 